So when we analyze the uh, loads and connections for specifically structures, and um, even more specifically, let's only focus on these kind of structural elements, beams or columns, uh, you're going to have quite a select uh, number of loads and a select number of connections you need to work with. And before we look at specific problems, let's just go through what kind of loads and what kind of connections you'll have, uh, you'll be seeing in problems. So there are three types of loads. One, you have a concentrated load. And that's, uh, you think of just a single finger pushing against any kind of uh, body. And that's basically the best image you can have a concentrated. It, it, the force, all the force that your arm gives is concentrated on a single point. And you should think of that point as infinitesimally small um, for uh, the sake of problems, uh, solving problems. So if you have a beam, then that's a concentrated load of force F. Um, you can have a concentrated load in any direction at any point. It could be this way or it could be in this direction. R1 is a concentrated load at this point. Point A. Now we can have a distributed load. And that's probably more natural for structures. So let's say you have um, a beam where there is maybe the rain is falling and you're going to have forces all along this entire beam and you'll tend to draw that uh, abstractly as just a select few but then you put a line over it all and that just means that over this entire period there are uh, forces downwards and you usually would need to know a function for this so you usually call it something a function of x x being in this direction over a distance l and if say um, your distributed load is Q1 over that area, then you'll have Q1 um, over an L distance, or your total force will be Q1 times L. Um, and then really that function can change. You can imagine a beam um, receiving a distributed load like this, where the farther you go out, the more load you get. Uh, it could also be something completely random, doesn't matter. Um, but you'll use that function over a distance L to solve problems. Um, the final kind of load you'll have is actually not really a force at all, but it's a rotation. It's more of a torque you know, moment. And you can think of that as somewhere on this bump. You have some kind of rotation. Now, the best way to think about this is um, if I'm holding the beam like this, like these are the two connections, and something causes this um, beam to tend to rotate, then I can use these two fingers to create some kind of rotation anywhere in this beam when I'm pushing down this finger and up with this finger. But it's more like I'm just kind of twisting this beam. Well, I'm feeling reactionary forces here, so then that proves already that a moment kind of load can induce forces in the connections, so we do have to care about this. Um, so you draw that as a dot about the point around which there's a moment and the direction. You can also have a moment at the edges, which is probably the reactionary force. Um, so before the end of this video, there's just some basic conventions you want to know. Um, and let's do it in relation to the formulas you use in this case. Care about the total force in the horizontal direction should be zero, and you want to draw indicate the direction that is positive. Um, you're going to have the total for net force in the positive in the vertical direction equals zero uh, for statics problems, and you're going to indicate that up is positive. And you want the total moment about a certain point to be zero, and you're going to once again indicate the direction. So these are really the three. Uh, equations that are used to solve most static load problems. And finally, let's look at the types of connections, uh, which is really what were my fingers in that holding this beam, um, and how can that change and affect 
what kind of reaction forces you'll have. First you can have a roller, and that's just going to look like this. It's like a ball on a, on a, uh, this hashed uh, ground just represents any kind of rigid surface, and you'll see this like this. So let's say at the end of this beam is a roller. Think of it as a wheel, you can move it left and right, but then you can't go inwards, and also let's just say you can't go upwards. So this restricts um, forces in the horizontal, in the vertical direction. Um, and that also means that you can only have a reaction force up or down, uh, because uh, you cannot induce any forces from the ground left or right, because this thing is free to move. Um, second, you have a pin. And the pin's just gonna look like the kind of bottom of any kind of equipment uh, that is stable. So this can't move in any direction. Um, so you can induce reaction forces this way or this way. Um, but it can rotate. Okay, so th think of this as a hinge, both of these. Um, so you've restricted fx equals fxy equals zero. Um, in this direction and in this direction. And finally you have a fixed joint which is completely, think of a weld in a, in a steel frame construction. Uh, think of a cantilever directly into a building. And what this means is not only can it not move, translate, it can't rotate about this point. Um, so no rotation. So all of these is true and then you also have no moment, um, and you'll probably just encounter this in all of your statics problems.